Hi everyone. This is Megan Wisner, Quinlan, and I wanted to do a video today to discuss art journals and how I work in them, what kinds I like. I am spread out on my bed because it has the best lighting in this room <laughs> and I have so many all next to me so um, they're all kind of beside me. But art journaling, you know, for those of you who are getting started or just finding out about art journaling, it's basically the act of creating art. Here is one of my art journals in a journal. So doing art on a page in a book. Um, and it can be lots of writing. It can be less writing. Um, these are some of my older journals. It's really up to you. I have been doing art journaling for a long time and I have found some ways that I like to work, which I thought I would share with you today. And also, um, you know, the different kind of journals that are out there and how they work um, and why, what might best suit your needs. Um, from handmade journals like these to big journals to small journals, I have them all right here. So just to get started, I'll show you one of my first art journals before I really started back to art journaling about six years ago. This was my only art journal. I have my most treasured photograph of all time on the cover, and it basically was just a simple white page journal where I could work. It was just a three ring binder with just some regular stiff paper. But as I came back, the first journal I discovered that I highly recommend for anybody who is new is the Dilutions Journal. And that is made by Ranger Inc. and Diane Reevely. And there are so many versions and sizes. There are versions that come in all black. There are versions that come this size, which is like a I don't know, like a five by eight. This is a nine by 12 journal. There's so many different ways to go. However, I love the Dilutions journal for beginners because it has this great, very thick paper that's very, very smooth. And um, you can really treat it with anything. You can use watercolors, acrylic paint, markers, pencils, um, anything. It all works on here. Collage, glue, mixed media. And when you're just starting out, you don't want to be too overwhelmed with what you're using. And so I really like the Dilutions journal, especially this size. So for me, starting back into it, having a small size, um, was kind of key. I didn't, I didn't feel too um, intimidated. It was a good size to work in. It was small enough. I could take it places and it was just a great place to start. So I think not working too big when you first start out is important, but also having something where the paper allowed me to do whatever. So in these journals, I did collage. I experimented with just pen and ink. I experimented with watercolor, um, mixed media, and it all worked great. I was always pleased with the results more watercolor. It really is just such a great place to start. If you're just new to art journaling, the Dilutions uh, journals are a way to go. And then eventually after a while, I, I kind of moved up to the bigger journal um, with these pages and I really enjoyed these as well. Plus, you know, should you start to get into the Dilutions catalog of art supplies with the ink sprays and all that stuff, all of her paints and sprays work, of course, remarkably well in these journals. So these are actually her sprays and stencils. So, you know, I can't say enough good things about this journal. Um, eventually, however, I moved into the Dina Wakely line as I started getting more into mixed media art, which is kind of Dina Wakely's specialty. Um, and the first journal that she put out was this uh, mixed media journal 
and I was blown away because it had watercolor paper, burlap paper, canvas, and craft, which I love working on craft. It's super fun. So when I discovered these, I was just so excited because, you know, every day you could do something different. You know, I thought that was really interesting. The watercolor paper in this journal is very smooth, but it is cotton. So it's a very soft uh, watercolor. So if you're going to work on this paper, I highly recommend using gesso um, because it will protect the paper from kind of rubbing away since it's a soft watercolor paper with cotton. Um, but again, these all work great. So um, this is my current journal with uh, the watercolor pages. Um, you can still do quite a bit of watercolor effects on them. I will staple things to the canvas. Um, I have painted on the canvas, painted, glued, stapled on the burlap. Um, craft is always fun to work on. I love doing monochromatic spreads in, in these pages, but and also colors really pop on the craft paper. So this journal is a fun one. You know, if you're ready for something a little more uh, interesting in your journaling, uh, so you're not facing the same kind of um, pages every time, this is another place to experiment. Then they also put out this small square six by six journal. And the thing that was cool with this one is that the paper is a very thick watercolor paper, thicker than the watercolor paper in this journal. This one is a very textured, I think it's a 300 pound cotton watercolor paper. Again, you always want to use gesso for the most part when you're using this, but I loved how thick it was and I had so much fun kind of playing with those pages. Because of the thickness, it really allows you to do quite a bit. Um, on its pages. And this was also another great size to move from. Like if, if size is the first thing that's intimidating you when you got started, I kind of really went from this journal to this journal. And I, I did like 10 of these and 10 of these because I felt the most comfortable working small when I was kind of getting started. And then I really, you know, moved up to these and really got going. So the six by six is another fun one. And again, you know, you can really do so much on it. Collage, painting, um, stamping, just everything. I really like working on these as well. Then they came out with the blue journal, which is the next Dina Wakely mixed media journal. And this one has the really thick cotton watercolor paper from the 6x6 and denim and white burlap. They eliminated the canvas on this one and they did denim instead. So I love this. And also this one does not have craft paper. So super fun one. I love working in this as well. Um, just super cool options. I love the denim. Um, you can still get some really nice watercolor effects in these. I love stapling stuff to the burlap. This is the one that I got to do a sample for the Creativation Show um, for Ranger and Dina. And this one, I really, I was so excited to play in this one. Again, just really having fun with all the different substrates and textures with these as well. Um, so another fun size to try. And um, I wanted to also talk about, so our journaling itself, right? When I, when I first got it started, I would have a book and I would go to that book, that one book every day. And then when, when I was finished with it, I would start a new book. But as I quickly learned, when you're working in mixed media, if you're doing paints or anything like that, um, you need drying time. So if you're not just doing ink and collage, you know, stuff that doesn't really have any 
drying time, I realized that it kind of makes sense to have multiple journals to work in at one time so that you can, you know, do one technique here and while that's drying, open up the next one and, and do another technique. But I started really kind of branching out with my styles and getting a little frustrated. I noticed that while I was working, I was working in different techniques. Sometimes I wanted to do watercolors. Sometimes I wanted to do just collage. Sometimes I wanted to do mixed media. And personally, I started kind of feeling funny about doing like my just plain collages in my mixed media book or my just um, plain watercolors in my watercolor book. So what I have done is created journals for each kind of work that I'm doing. So right now I have <laughs> one, two, three, four, five journals for all the different styles I like to do. Um, and that's not including my fun little handmade journals, um, but I'm not going to consider those <laughs> into this equation right now. So what I've decided is I have my two mixed media journals that I use kind of as one, but they both have different pages. So like obviously the mixed media journal has craft, the mixed media blue edition journal has different kinds of papers. So I just do mixed media stuff in these two journals, just mixed media. And um, then I will get burnt out on occasion on just doing mixed media and I want to do collage. So I have created a collage journal where I am just working on collage style. And in this journal, I decided to use the Dilutions journal because it has the smoothest pages in these books, I'm really only doing simple collage with a lot of magazine images, paint, and doodling. And that's it. And it's a different kind of style. It's a different kind of practice. So I like having this kind of separate journal to work in. Um, it makes me really happy. And also practicing these kinds of techniques as well. So it's a place where I can kind of do a certain kind of work all in one place. And I tend to use mostly um, a lot of the Diane Reevely Dilutions products in this journal. And so that is that style. I also started in my journal practice, started trying to learn how to work with patterns and teach myself about layering. So then I created another journal called my Patterns Journal for just working on those kinds of techniques. And again, I went to the Dilutions Journal for this because I really didn't want to work too much on mixed media stuff as much. I wanted to keep the spreads a lot thinner and a little bit bigger because I really wanted to teach myself how to work with stencils primarily. In these journals, so much of what I'm doing is all stencil work. There is some collage going on. I'll use some magazine images, but really I'm trying to develop a way to create texture in a way that I like um, because it really does take quite a bit of practice. I will say that in this journal in particular, I use a lot of products. Um, I'm always using the Dina Wakely paints from Ranger, they're just my favorite, and I love the Dina Wakely um, sprays, the acrylic sprays. So those are the basic art supplies that I use, um, but a lot of the stencils in here, like this is an entire Ranger page. These are all Dina Wakely stencils, pretty much all of them in here, and her paints and that kind of thing. But most of the stencils on most of the pages, um, are a lot of the stencil girl stencils because they have a lot of the 9 by 12 stencils so I like using those in here and again I'm, I'm practicing different techniques so 
these techniques are a little different, playing with stencils and how to use them, trying to create texture. This page, there's just so many fun ways to get texture on these. Um, so again, different journal, just practicing textures and full on spreads. Lastly, I just recently also started to want to practice more watercolors. And so I got a moleskin watercolor, uh, maybe eight by 12, nine by 12, same size journal where I can just practice my watercolor techniques. So the idea with this one is I would do very little collage and mostly just work with watercolors um, in this one. As you can see, this is a new journal. I have just made this decision recently. But by breaking up all the journals so that I can work on different techniques each time, it really took some of the anxiety away from me. I'm not sure why it made me angsty to have collage next to mixed media next to watercolors, but it's also a way for me to almost approach it like classwork. Like this is where I do my math. This is where I do my science. This is where I do my English. Because you might have a different feeling each day and now it's really fun to say, okay, in this journal, I'm going to focus on a certain kind of technique. Um, it helps me see how I've developed as I've worked. Sorry, I forgot to turn my phone off. Um, and also just, you know, I can kind of go back and forth. It helps me reference pages that I did previously that I liked. And, um, I mean, one little side note, I just recently also started trying to do um, like a planner, but more of a grungy kind of planner. This is my get it together planner. So I started this in October and I created a format that I think would work for me to do um, as I go, you know, throughout the weeks. And I still really like this format. I just clearly have not gotten very far. So it's been a very busy period, but I really do want to come back to it. Um, but basically I'm using a Dilutions square. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what size this is. It looks like an eight by eight square. And um, I'm just doing a square of gesso. I even have, they always have these cute little folders. So I have a little stencil. I have all my kind of cute planner stickers in here. But I made a little stencil from a vinyl folder like this so that I have the border here and I have the insert here depending on what I want to do. So each week I can lay this out and just kind of paint some white gesso in here to get it started. Um, because I just thought it would be fun to have like a different background, black. And it gave, you know, such a grungy feel when you put the gesso on it. But I haven't gotten far. I need to kind of revisit that. And But, you know, when you have six different types of journals you're working in, it's hard to get started with the seventh. But anyway, I just thought it would be fun for people who are looking to kind of find the right journal that suits them or find a way to create a journal practice that worked for them and you know when i finally broke up all the journals into different styles it really made it a lot easier for me to work because then um, i could take a break and work in different ways and that also helps you to kind of fine-tune your art journaling practice as well it allows you to have room for practicing different kinds of techniques and of course, you know, the different kinds of pages are going to allow you to do that. So I hope this has been helpful um, and gave you some ideas for how to work in your art journals. Um, thank you so much. And I'll keep trying to put, you know, some more tips and tricks on my channel. Thank you.